All right, Barry, uh, how exactly did the experts go about screwing this up so badly? Well, first of all, big high five, G, to you and me for calling what we saw was coming, which was there was a incredible, undocumented, unverifiable Trump movement from people that had never been in this policy procedure before. In other words, these are non-political people that had never engaged, for the most part, in politics. Yeah. They had felt disenfranchised because, for the most part, it didn't matter whether there were Republicans or Democrats controlling the House or the Senate or the White House. They couldn't figure out the difference. It all looked the same. And finally, a guy shows up from the outside that says, the only way we can fix this is tear it down and start over. Let's start a revolution. These are people that, for the most part, have never been in the in the politics and never been in the arena and have never been polled before. So they didn't show up. And that's what I predicted with you several weeks ago. There could be as much as 5% that didn't show up and those 5% were engaged, and they showed up yesterday, and that was the difference. Barry, um, all, another thing all the experts said, on both sides of the aisle, financial experts all over the place said, if Mr. Trump wins, the stock market is going to go berserk. Our economy will be forever screwed up because of what's going to happen in the stock market, not just in the U.S., but also abroad. Uh, foreign leaders aren't going to know how to deal with this. Literally every prediction made by traditional experts in this particular election was completely made fool. Um, so the markets this morning, as you know, they were a little erratic. Then they came back uh, this afternoon, big and strong, almost right. setting records, actually. Is this a precursor to what we're going to see in a Trump administration? Well, there's a couple answers. You know, it was similar to the threats and the doomsday, the world will end predictions if Britain moved out of the EU. And that was the big threat to keep people from voting for Brexit, that the EU without Great Britain would crush Great Britain. And in the weeks leading up, everybody was confident that Brexit would fail and the stock markets in Europe and the United States would be stable. As soon as the vote came in, there was panic. Guess what? It recovered. If you looked at the futures market last night, Gina, at about 2.30 or 3 o'clock in the morning, the futures were down so much, they suspended futures on the NASDAQ contracts. And what happened? Instead of the market opening 800 points down, it stabilized. It's simply a matter of markets don't like unpredictability. And once they have the knowledge of what's going to happen, I predict medium and long term, you're going to have a boom in the economy. Why? Because you got a guy that gets business. And we haven't had that for, oh, I don't know, decades, maybe. Yeah. Well, uh, Mr. Trump didn't waste a moment, as we know him not to do. Um, some people might have taken a nap or something today, but he didn't. He, I know for sure he met with all of his uh, insider people inside the campaign. Uh, they had quite a long meeting figuring out how exactly they were going to begin the transition, which starts tomorrow. He also had time for a phone call with the uh, president of Mexico and also Benjamin Netanyahu. Uh, he said that he's going to meet with both of them soon. What's your prediction on those two meetings? Well, I'll tell you, I, I've got a bunch to talk to you about when we talk about foreign policy in the next segment. Uh, my feeling is this, you know, now that it, it is over and it's President-elect Trump, it takes the uncertainty out of how foreign leaders will deal with him. If people want to deal with the United States of America, that road leads through 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue and its new occupant. So everybody, even the president of Mexico, is going to deal with Donald Trump on a whole new set of rules and uh, expectations coming from the United States. You know, quite honestly, our foreign policy has been backing up for eight years. And everybody universally, with the exception of a few countries like Israel or Canada and Great Britain, have disrespected us so horribly Trump is going to change that. And I bet you 
Obviously, we weren't little birds on the wall able to listen to that discussion today. Things are already changing, G, simply because there's a new sheriff in town and somebody that's armed and ready for a new uh, relationship in foreign policy. I wish you and I could have heard that discussion with the president of Mexico. Do you think that wall came up today? <laughs> All right, Barry, we are going to have you back in the next segment, as you mentioned, uh, talking a little bit deeper on foreign policy, especially this whole thing with Netanyahu and also what you think the 100 first 100 day plan is going to look like, where he starts with that and uh, what results we'll see in what amount of time. So we're going to have Barry come back.